Go Inside the Crimson Tide with your hosts, Rodney Orr and Gary Harris, keeping you informed on everything Alabama. And now, Tider Insider TV. And good evening, everyone, and welcome in to Tider Insider Television here in our digital media, WVUA 23 studio inside Bryant-Denny Stadium. I'm Gary Harris. Rodney Orr is across the studio from me as we continue to work at a safe social distance during this uh, pandemic. Well, I tell you what, it's Heisman Trophy edition. We hope that we will have a Heisman announcement during this show. And if we do, we'll pass that along to you. And certainly we're hoping it's either Devontae Smith or Mac Jones. But we'll start off with Alabama playing for another, another national championship. The change of venue didn't matter. The Rose Bowl was played in Arlington, Texas this year, not Pasadena, California because of COVID. But still, the tide came out smelling like a rose. Alabama beats Notre Dame 31-14 and really put this one away in the first half. Uh, they jumped out 21-7. At half, 28-7 in the third, and then just kind of uh, got the game over with. Notre Dame scored late to make it respectable, 31-14. But Bama led 31-7 uh, late in the fourth quarter, and basically the game was was over. Alabama defensively made some plays. There you see Christian Harris with the pick. They didn't give up the huge chunk plays that you want to avoid in these kind of games. Made Notre Dame earn what they uh, what they got. There you see the freshman Tim. Uh, that's actually Christian Barmore with a sack. Of, uh, of Notre Dame there, and uh, Ian Book had problems with that pass rush. Bottom line is, Rodney, that the Tide had its streak of, thir of consecutive 35-point games broken, but it doesn't matter. They they won that game dominant uh, fashion, 31 to 14. Let's hear now from Mac Jones, Alabama quarterback. We kind of protected the lead a little bit, and obviously we had to do a better job of just playing the plays um, and not look at the scoreboard, but. Really, that just starts with me and stay aggressive and do what the offense coordinator and Sark tells us to do. Um, so really, you know, just getting ready for the next game. We got to make improvements and, and find out what we did bad and find out what we did good and just grow off that. All right, Rod, your analysis of that Rose Bowl game, Alabama over Notre Dame 31-14. Well, you know, Gary, I thought it went about like we expected. I think I picked it. 38-21, you picked it 35-20, so I don't think it ended up a lot different in terms of the point differential than what we kind of thought. I thought Notre Dame would come in and play a solid game. I thought Alabama played pretty well. Uh, probably not their best game, but certainly not a bad game. I mean, I thought they kind of cruised to victory, if you want to put it that way. And listen, for me, growing up in the 70s, suffering some of those very, very painful losses to Notre Dame, anytime you beat Notre Dame, it's big. And this was certainly big uh, for a lot of reasons. And now, you know, we'll look forward to Ohio State. Indeed. And Ohio State uh, certainly had an impressive performance in the Sugar Bowl and the other CFP semifinal in New Orleans. Now, Clemson came out fast on offense and uh, led 14 to 7. But from that point on, it was all Buckeyes. They outscored the Tigers 42 to 14 the rest of the way to win it 49 28. And just some eye popping offensive numbers over 600 total yards. Justin Fields was phenomenal in this game, 22 of 28 for 385, six touchdowns, just one interception. Even though he took a big shot in the ribs, he played through it. Trey Sermon, who has come on late, the Oklahoma transfer from Marietta, Georgia, Sprayberry High School, 31 carries, 193 yards and a score. And Chris Olav, the wide receiver, six receptions, 132 yards and two touchdowns. Those offensive numbers, we talk a lot about Alabama's big three, but Ohio State's big three came up big against Clemson. Yeah, that's Gary. When you look at Ohio State, look at these explosive weapons. That's true freshman right there, Jamison Williams, a guy that Alabama recruited out of St. Louis. There you see Justin Fields. I thought it was Justin Fields' best game I've ever seen him yep. play, Gary. Uh, he was – look, not only did he throw the ball, showed a lot of toughness uh, playing through that injury, ran the ball really hard. Uh, so he – there you see the pain. Uh, you know, he just had an announced MVP type performance, no question about it. They spread the ball around. There you see the tight end, uh, the Farrell catching the ball. Uh, another tight end, Jeremy Rucker, had a touchdown pass. Three, three touchdown receptions uh, from their tight ends. The deep ball here. You mentioned Chris Olive. Uh, there he is scoring. So they've got another wide receiver, Garrett Wilson, uh, Wilson that's an extremely expos explosive player. So when you look at this team, you talk about the weapons they have, the offensive line that they have. This is going to be a really difficult task for the Alabama defense. All right, Ronnie, just a quick thought on the, the news flash from today, and that is reports saying that Ohio State is dealing with a COVID situation on the team that could put Monday night's game in jeopardy in regards to a, a postponement. Uh, 
right now, both athletics directors, Greg Byrne and Gene Smith, say the game is on. So did Bill Hancock. I think it has to be played. I mean, you've got – and we'll get to more on this in a moment with, with um, Sark, but you've got Sark starting a new job at Texas. You push this thing back. I mean, uh, I, I think it's pretty much got to be Monday night or bust, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Because, listen, Gary, I mean, what's, what's to say that you couldn't have more issues the next week with other players, whether it's Alabama or Ohio State, either one. You can't keep – postponing this game. They've got two players, my understanding. Ohio State has two defensive linemen. Granted, they're really, really good players. Uh, no question about that. They're prominent contributors to the team, to the defensive line. But at the same time, I mean, they, they played a game against Northwestern. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, in the, in the Big Ten championship game. They were without like 20 players. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, right now they have two, and uh, that's uh, in no way a, a way to uh, – postpone a game. Yeah, Monday night, got to yeah. play it, in my opinion. All right, now it's time for Coach Talk. Less than 24 hours after Alabama defeated Notre Dame, Crimson Tide offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian was announced as new head football coach at Texas. Boy, that happened in a hurry. Tom Herman fired Saturday morning. Sark introduced Saturday afternoon. He'll remain with the team through the national championship game. Alabama head coach Nick Saban doesn't think Sark's new job will be a distraction. You know, I went through it when I became the head coach at Michigan State, and I was the defensive coordinator of the Cleveland Browns with Bill Belichick, and we had like five or six games left to play in the season and had a chance to get in the playoffs, which we did, and went too deep in the playoffs, won the first game, lost the second. But I think you, you just have to, you know, separate yourself and focus on, you know, look, if it wasn't for the players, if it wasn't for the players at the Cleveland Browns being the best defense, I probably would have never got the Michigan State job. So you kind of owe it to the players. I, to give your best, uh, to do your best, to help them get prepared for the game so they can play well in the game. Well, that's how I always felt. I think that's how Sark feels. I agree, Rod. I see no issues here. Uh, I think he is focused. He's the head coach at Texas, but that'll begin on Tuesday. Uh, he's all in with this team. First of all, he wants that national championship ring. Secondly, as Coach Saban alluded to, Rodney, he wants to, to see these players get what they deserve. And thirdly, I think he wants to make a good impression on the new Texas fans that he is going to be uh, trying to endear himself to with an impressive offensive performance. I think he'll cut coach's rear end off, don't you? Listen, there's no question about it. He's a professional. Uh, certainly this is a game that he wants. And look, I, I think it helps him moving forward as well, Gary, in recruiting in Texas. Uh, you know, if he were to win a national championship, I think that's great exposure, something that he can use in the future in terms of the recruiting. And you see a montage of all the different awards that Alabama has already won. And, of course, uh, the Heisman Trophy is going to be announced here, hopefully while we're on the air. And we do expect, uh, you and I both are in agreement now, contrary to what I said about a month ago, we think Devontae Smith is going to win it. We'll keep you updated on that. With all the awards, all the, all the uh, prestige that this team has already um, enjoyed. Uh, you know, right, Nick Saban calls all outside external influences rat poison. Any thought of this team uh, dealing with rat poison this week, Rod? Listen, there's so much leadership on this team. I think you see all the guys that are winning the awards. Those are the leaders, Mac Jones, Devontae Smith, Najee Harris, uh, you know, Patrick Sertain. All of these guys, big-time leaders, uh, you know, the offensive linemen that have won this award, the Joe Moore Award, you've got Alex Leatherwood, obviously, even though Landon Dickerson is out, certainly uh, he's been a great contributor. Evan Neal, all of these guys are leaders. Uh, so I, I really don't see that. I think this is a team that's really focused, got a lot of leadership, Gary, and I think they're thinking about Ohio State. And I can confirm that Jalen Waddell did practice with Alabama. You're not going to see him in that practice video from today, but he did practice today, and will he play? We don't know, but boy, what a lift that would be. And what another weapon for that already potent Alabama offense. Well, still to come on Tider Insider Television, Alabama women's basketball look to stay perfect on Monday night with a win over a top five team. And the men's basketball team is in action tonight. Coach Nate Oates opens up about the biggest change he's seen within this team coming off that huge win over Tennessee. Stick around. More TITV coming up after this. And as always, we'll be getting your phone calls, emails, and tweets. The phone number 205-348-WVUA. That's 348-9882. Interact with us on Tider Insider TV right now. Go ahead and give us a call so you can get online. We'll be right back after this.
And we're back on TITV. If the Heisman Trophy winner is announced during this program, we will get it to you as soon as uh, the announcement is made. I'm Gary Harris sitting across the studio from Tider Insiders Rodney Orr. Time to talk hoops. Alabama head coach Nate Oates scores what some are calling his signature win so far at Alabama. Tide pulled off a huge victory over then unbeaten in number seven Tennessee, 71-63 Saturday afternoon in Knoxville. It's the Tide's first road victory over top ten teams since 2004. Now, Bama was uh, shooting the three ball in that game, especially in the second half when they knocked down eight of a, uh, 11. They were 10 of 20 for the game. Uh, John Petty Jr., he seems to have straightened his situation out. 17 points on six of seven shooting from the field. Perfect four of four from behind the arc. He is the SEC co-player of the week as Bama was red hot in the second half. That's what it takes to beat a team like that on the road. And Coach Oates said the chemistry and the culture that they're building is what won the game. Really, everybody's just caring about winning right now. And I feel like the ball moves a little better when that happens. Like, nobody's worried about their own shot. We're just worried about getting us a great shot. Everybody's just worried about us getting a stop on defense. I really feel like our culture's gotten really good over these last few weeks here. All right, now Alabama taking on Florida right now over at Coleman Coliseum. Tide trying to follow up that win with a big one. Quick thought on that win over Tennessee, Rodney. I guess it's just one game, but the Tide gets to 2-0 in the SEC, and that's a road win over a team that a lot of people are predicting to go to the Final Four. Yeah, a huge win. There's no question, Gary. Anytime you can win on the road in the SEC, but you go to Knoxville, you upset the number seven team. I think it's a great win, and you mentioned signature win, and it may just be at this point. And right now in the first half, Alabama leads Florida 29-24. Javon Quinterly not playing for the Tide, the starting point guard uh, out due to uh, what's being called a medical condition. Well, last night at Coleman Coliseum, the Alabama women's basketball team suffered its first loss of the season, 77-60. They fell to number five, South Carolina. Uh, Tide guard Jordan Lewis, though, had a heck of a game. She finished with a career-high 28 points, but South Carolina is really, really good. Alabama's now 7-1. and one. They'll host LSU this Thursday night at 6 p.m. on the SEC Network+. Plus. And in the NBA, Bama's own Colin Sexton is off to an all-star start this season. He's led the Cavs to an impressive 4-3 and three start this season. He's led them in scoring in all but one game. He's averaging... 25.7 points, right at 26 points, two rebounds, 3.4 assists, and a steal and a half per game. The last person to be this hot for the Cavs and over 20, average over 20 points a game, of course, was LeBron James. So Sexton off to a great start this season. Well, coming up on TITV, Titans running back Derrick Henry is once again the NFL's rushing king. We'll show you how another monster performance took him to heights that very few running backs have ever experienced in the National Football League. And up next, we're welcoming your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Go ahead and give us a call now, 205-348-9882. There's the email address. You can also tweet at us by using the hashtag TITV. We'll be right back with the only show that takes you inside the Crimson Tide, Tider Insider TV. On Sunday versus the Texans, Derrick Henry was at it again. Career high 250 yards, putting him over 2,000 for the season. Uh, he wins the rushing title for a second straight year. Three 200-yard games this season. He's the first player in NFL history to have five games of more than 200 yards and two touchdowns. And he's just 27 years old. He turned 27 yesterday. Happy birthday. He's cut from a, a, a different mold. I'm telling you, man, Rod, this guy is a beast. Over 2,000 yards in high school, 2,000 yards at Alabama, 2,000 yards in the NFL. I'm telling you, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. He's that good. All right, welcome back into the program. Let's head to the phone lines. And first up is our pal Rick over in Bluff Park. Hey, Rick. Hey, pals. How y'all doing this evening? Doing well. Um, now, I really don't care who the offensive coordinator is as long as he comes in with a take the top off the defense attitude. I've just got ruined on this run and shoot offense that they run now. It sure is fun to watch. Also, um, any news out of the transfer portal, especially pertaining to uh, Eric Gilbert and uh, what in Slade Bolden, the Gatorade Player of the Year in Louisiana, his senior year. All right, Thanks Rick. For taking my uh, you know, all teams are monitoring the transfer portal, for better or for worse. I'm still not sure it's a good thing, but uh, all teams are taking a look at it. Some teams, quite frankly, are probably going to recruit more from the portal than they do from the high school ranks, which, again, I'm not – 
hip on that. As far as Rick Gilbert is concerned, uh, there are reports that he is officially now in the portal. Rodney Alabama recruited him out of high school. Many felt like he would sign here. He didn't. He went to LSU. I think it's obvious that a lot of schools will be interested in Arik Gilbert. Yeah, great talent, no question about that. A guy that, although he's listed as a tight end, Gary has some wide receiver type skills and, you know, was a true freshman at LSU this year, played against Alabama. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with him, Rick. I, I know that Georgia certainly would like to have him. Tennessee, uh, I do think he has some interest in Alabama. I know that there was a point that the LSU coaching staff really thought that uh, they were a little concerned that he might end up at Alabama So uh, in this transfer. So we'll see what happens. Again, you have to have scholarships, though. You know, Alabama just signing a full class. So I really don't know what their numbers are going to be in terms of bringing in transfers. As far as Slade Bolden's concerned, yeah, he was really highly honored coming out of uh, uh, West Monroe, Louisiana. Had over 4,000 yards his, his senior year of total offense. So uh, he was one of the uh, highly rated players in that state. Rod, do you remember, was he the Gatorade Player of the Year? He might have been. I can't no, recall. I, I don't Robinson. really know if he was actually the Gatorade Player of the Year, but he was extremely highly honored in terms of you know, being mentioned for the credentials that, that he had. Yeah, yeah, and he's done a good job you know, in place of, of uh, Waddle. And, and uh, not saying that he was the Gatorade Player of the Year. Rick, will check on that, see what we can find out. But he was a really highly touted player. All right, let's get to another phone call. John is with us in Bessemer. Hey, John, what's up? Yeah, what's going on, buddy? Hey, pal, you know it. Hey, man, are we, are we got a good chance beating uh, the other team next, uh, being Monday <laughs> night. I just want to find out about next year, man. Uh, uh, is, is Alabama going to have a good team next year, brother? And I'll tell you later, brother. All right, later. bro. Uh, let's get through this year first. Uh, yeah, you know, I've said all year uh, I picked Alabama to win the national championship before the season started. I think when they play their best game, uh, they're the best team in the country. Now, Rodney here, and we discussed this earlier, Ohio State's really good now. They're, they're a lot like Alabama. They recruited at a very high level. They got all the resources, all the facilities. They're a national championship caliber program. Uh, you don't play your best, and you can get beat. But clearly, Alabama's capable of, of winning the game. I, you know, we'll make our predictions later. But uh, I like Alabama. If the Tide plays its best, I think they win. If they have an off night, and Justin Fields and Sermon and those guys play like they did against Clemson, you know, Ohio State can win the game. No question. They're extremely talented. We talked about some of the players. We talked about all the offensive weapons that they have. Really talented on the offensive line. They're really good up front defensively with a lot of good players. Uh, they, Even though they're really talented in the secondary, Gary, they've recruited tremendous athletes back there. They have been a little leaky. They're actually giving up 280 yards a game passing. They're, they're giving up more than their passing yardage on the offensive side. So that might be when you talk about attacking Ohio State, you might be able to, if you can protect Mac Jones, I think you can make some plays. And as far as next year, Alabama's going to be good. John, I don't know how good. We'll kind of get, we'll get through this season, but they'll be good. They're always going to be good as long as one Nick Saban is the head coach. We'll still to come on Tider Insider. We'll have an update on the Heisman Trophy. And also, more of your phone calls, emails, and tweets. Again, the phone number right there on your screen, 205-348-9882. Go ahead and call now. We'll be right back. TITV. After this. Welcome back. Still awaiting a Heisman Trophy announcement. And phone lines are open. So if you want to get through, you can call in right now. 205-348-WVUA. That's 205-348-9882. You can get through now. we got a tweet, though, from Goal Line Stand that we're going to get to. How will Alabama's front seven pressure Ohio State to limit explosive plays? How do we stop the run game? Goal Line Stand, that's a great question. Because what was so dynamic about Ohio State's offense, we, we saw the numbers that Fields put up, but Trey Sermon, we remember from Oklahoma, quite frankly, he hadn't done much this year. Then he got to the Big Ten Championship game and went nuts with over 300 yards. He backed that up with another big game against Clemson, and I'm telling you something. He's a downhill runner. He gets to running the ball. you got to respect the run. Then that play action opens up. Rodney, it is going to be a challenge for Alabama's front seven to slow down this OSU attack. Well, he's got 868 yards, Gary. In over 600 in the last three games. In the last Jeez. three games, he's averaging over 200 yards a game rushing. So he's a guy that, uh, you know, he's got great vision. Uh, you know, you got to get, when you get him, you better get him on the ground. He's very elusive, strong. Uh, he's a good receiver out of the backfield and can do a lot of things. And, you know, I, I, Gary, I think one of the keys certainly is going to be the health of, of uh, Justin Fields. I mean, if he's limited as a runner, Mm -hmm. that's going to make a big difference for this Alabama defense because I think then you can you, – you, you, that concern is, is, is limited. And, uh, 
you know, you can really pressure him, I think, uh, in terms of in the pocket a little bit more. So uh, we'll, we'll see what his condition is, what his status is. But all those great receivers we talked about, very, very explosive playmakers. All right, let's get to a phone call. George is with us from Childersburg. Hey, George, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing great, man. Yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, you know, we got this new running back that's uh, committed to Alabama from uh, Texas. And uh, rumors going around that uh, his main recruiter might be moving on with our, with our offensive coordinator. What do you guys think about that? All right, you're talking about Kamara Wheaton, who is, uh, who is committed. I don't think he signed yet. Uh, you know, Oklahoma was Alabama's competition for him, but he is from the state of Texas. So right now, I know a lot of folks are concerned about Sark and the potential of some other uh, coaches going to Austin, uh, you know, to impact him. What do you think? Yeah, you know, really, I think when you look at it, to be honest with you, his main recruiter and, and, and all of those guys chipped in, but it's the Alabama program, I think, with yeah. Nick Saban. I think that's the attraction here. Uh, listen, when all these assistants leave, who keeps churning out the first-round draft picks? That, that's where it is. So I, I think that they understand it's Nick Saban's program. Uh, t- as far as your question is concerned, uh, I know a lot of people have asked that, Gary, but I think right now, from everything I've picked up, I think he's solid to Alabama. Again, could that change by February? Certainly could. All right, breaking news. Devontae Smith has won the Heisman Trophy. He's the first wide receiver to do it since Desmond Howard in 91. Of course, a couple years before that, Tim Brown at Notre Dame won it. But congratulations to Devontae Smith. He wins the 2020 Heisman Trophy. Very deserving. All right, we're going to come back with our uh, predictions for the game coming up Monday night. We still feel like there's going to be a game Monday night. And uh, a couple of Crimson Tide legends have passed, along, uh, passed away as well. Details coming up. Welcome back again. Breaking news, Devontae Smith wins the Heisman Trophy. Sad weekend for Alabama folks. A uh, couple of legends, Don Sauls, the oldest living Alabama football letterman, passed away at 101, and Alabama Former assistant basketball coach John Bostic, who both these men were great gentlemen. He passed away from complications due to COVID-19 at the age of 86. Real quickly, Rodney, prediction time for Monday night. Yeah, I think, Gary, when you look at this, this is an upfront game. I really believe that. I think if uh, yeah, Alabama can slow down Trey Sermon, put more of the game on Justin Fields, even though he's really good. But if you can take Sermon out of the game a little bit, put pressure there, I think that certainly is a key for Alabama. I also think another key, Gary, is on the other side protecting Mack. All right, you got it, 44-36. I think Bama wins it, too. I think it's going to be an exciting game. Let's go ahead and show my prediction. I got the tie getting it done, 45-31. We'll find out, hopefully, on Monday night. For Rodney Orr, I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for watching Tider Insider Television. Devontae Smith, the Heisman Trophy winner. Catch a replay tonight at 1030 or anytime at WVUA23.com. Good night.